we're going to work the direct method cash flow. There are two types of cash flow methods that we can do. And we're going to do the direct method based on an example, okay? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to identify roughly about nine transactions. And we're going to decide whether or not they are cash flow activities. And if so, which ones are they? And then we're going to generate uh, a cash flow statement based on the direct method, okay? So, it says that we issued $30,000 shares of capital stock in exchange for 30, for 300, I'm sorry, we issued 30,000 shares of capital stock in exchange for $300,000 cash. So basically, we issued stock, right? And so, um, we received cash, so we know that cash is, this is a cash flow activity, because the fact is that we receive cash. The fact that we receive cash, we understand that it's an inflow. So we know it's a cash-related activity inflow. Now what we need to do now is identify what activity is it. And so if we debited cash, what will we actually credit when we issue shares of stock? We will credit common stock. So we have a debit to cash, credit to common stock. And we know that common stock is a part of stockholders' equity. Since we know that a common stock is a part of stockholders' equity, we know that... Issuing stock is a financing inflow activity, and it was three hundred thousand. Okay. Next. Says purchase equipment at a cost of forty thousand dollars. Ten thousand was paid cash, and the remaining was a no payable. So we bought some equipment, and we paid ten thousand cash for it, and the rest signed a note. How would you journalize that? First, you would debit equipment because it's increasing. Then you would have to credit cash for ten thousand dollars, because that's how much you paid. Then you would have to also credit that note's payable, right? So $10,000 of the cash, which we need to focus on, because that's a cash flow activity, was used to purchase what? Equipment, basically. And so since we credited cash, cash is an outflow, right? So we need to find out what is this activity. So we purchase equipment. That's the activity. And we know equipment is a what? Long-term asset. So the fact that it's a long-term asset dictates that it's going to be a what? Investing activity. And the fact that we purchase cash, cash is going down, so it's an outflow of $10,000. $10,000. So next it said purchase inventory on the account and the company uses the perpetual system. So how would you journalize purchasing inventory on account? You debit inventory and your credit account's payable. Is this a cash-related activity? Absolutely not. Why? Because no cash was involved. So it does not, it's not a cash-related activity. So purchase on account Non-cash activity. So it doesn't belong on the cash flow state. Next. Credit sales for the month total $12,000. The cost of goods sold was $70,000. Credit sales. Again, credit sales. We sold something on credit. How do you journalize that? You debit accounts receivable. You credit sales revenue. And so no cash was involved again. So this is yet another non-cash related activity. Number five, paid $5,000 in rent on a warehouse bill. So we paid for rent. When you pay for rent, keyword paid, every time you see the word paid, you always credit cash. 
So we know we're having an outflow. But what are we going to debit to finish this off? Rent expense. Rent expense is a part of the income statement, which means that what type of activity is this? This is a what? Operating activity. Operating outflow because we credited cash and it was of five thousand dollars six says we pay six thousand dollars to insurance company right so we pay six thousand dollars well there you go keyword pay six thousand dollars right so the fact that we pay right and the fact that we paid insurance for a one year beginning in april and what's today's date we're assuming okay it said this is during march so this one is kind of tricky it said pay six thousand dollars to an insurance company for a fire and liability insurance for one year period beginning in april so this hasn't happened yet. So this is really a prepaid. So how would we journalize this? We would debit prepaid insurance and credit what? Cash, right? Prepaids are what? Assets, particularly current assets. So prepaid insurance, we know we credited cash. So that makes it an outflow and since a prepaid is a current asset that's going to put us back into the operating category. And that was for $6,000. Number seven. Number seven said we paid $70,000 on account. So we paid on our account. How do you journalize paying on our account? You debit accounts payable. Credit what? Cash. The fact that we credit cash again, it's an outflow. And the fact that we debited accounts payable, accounts payable being a current liability, brings us back into that operating category. If you remember the rules, this is fairly simple. And that amount is for $70,000. Number eight. Number eight says we collected $55,000 on our account. So this is a collection on our account. And when you collect on our account, you debit cash, you credit accounts receivable. Accounts receivable, the fact that you debit cash makes it an inflow. And the fact that it's accounts receivable, current asset, brings it right back to that operating category. And that was for 55000 and last but not least, number nine, said we recorded depreciation. So we recorded depreciation. How do you journalize depreciation, guys? You debit depreciation expense, you credit accumulated depreciation. However, did it affect cash? Absolutely not. So that's why it's a non-cash activity. Because no cash was involved with depreciation. And so, your first step in creating a cash flow statement should be to understand this. Because we're going to now report the actual, um, the actual stuff. Okay? And so, for lack of space, I'm going to save this. Because I don't really... Yeah, you should be able to see that. And now we're going to make this cash flow statement. The direct method. Very easy. So, of course, we're going to start with our uh, title. So, we're going to say ABC, cash flow, and the year. It's a period for the year ended. Right? 
Hey, we're going to stop with our operating activities because that's first. And we had a couple of operating activities, right? We're going to start with our inflows first. So we had an operating activity inflow here for uh, 55000 I think that was a collection on our account. So we have inflow, collection, on account. And that was 55000 so we're going to put 55,000 right here. It's a positive number because it's an inflow. Then we're going to report the outflows that we had. We had a couple of outflows. And our first operating outflow was $5,000. And I think that was we paid rent. So for rent, we had an outflow of $5,000. That's going to be a negative number. Then we had another outflow for six thousand dollars, which was uh, prepaid insurance. Six thousand dollars. Then we had another outflow for seventy thousand dollars, which was what a payment on account. doing is listing. All right. So we're finished with our operating um, activities. So now we need to find out if we have a net cash inflow or a net cash outflow. And how do we do that? Well, a net cash inflow will mean that our total operating activities were exceeded by positive numbers. If we have a net cash outflow, that means that our total operating activities were exceeded by negative numbers. And so based on this, just eyeballing this, we can tell that we have a net cash outflow for operating of, let's get my calculator out, so we have 5,500 minus 55,000 minus 5,000 minus 6,000 minus 70,000. It gives us 26,000. 26, and it's a negative number because it's an outflow. So next we go on to our next investing activities. And we had an investing outflow. We didn't have any investing inflows, so we basically purchased something. We didn't sell something, a long-term asset. And remember, we purchased that equipment and we paid $10,000. So we have an outflow, no inflows, and we purchase equipment. And it was for ten thousand dollars. And so now we have we have a net cash outflow from investing of obviously a negative $10,000. And then we move on to our financing, our financing. So we have financing activities. And we have a financing activity of $300,000, right? We should stop. And it's an inflow. So we have inflow, issue, stock. And it's a positive number of $300,000. So now we have a net cash inflow 
finance it. About three hundred thousand dollars. So now that I've successfully created, I don't need this stuff anymore. And so what I'm going to do now is just shift the net cash amounts over just for a better look. Okay. So once you get to this point, your object is to add up all your net cash inflows and outflows for each activity. And so what we're going to do is add up our operating activities outflow to our, op, our investing activities outflow to our financing activity inflow. And that's going to give us the change in cash. Change in cash. So we have three hundred thousand minus ten thousand minus twenty six thousand. That gives you two hundred sixty four thousand dollars. Two hundred sixty four thousand dollars. Okay. And your last part would be to report your beginning balance of cash. Beginning balance of cash. This company just started this year. This is a new company. It just started. So our beginning balance of cash was zero. And now we have our ending balance of cash. What you do is add you're changing cash to your beginning balance, and then I'll give you your ending balance of cash. $264,000. And this is a perfect example of your cash flow statement. The direct method. It's the direct method. 